Hey everybody, Livingston here. We're about to jump into another episode of The Twilight Zone. Episode 2, One for the Angels. Looking forward to this one because it's one I have not seen. And I love it when I haven't seen a Twilight Zone episode. But it would be cool if you want to join along on the adventure because we have another 155 episodes to go. And subscribe, like, share, and join in on the adventure as we go forward and see these episodes together. And don't forget to comment because I'd like to hear your thoughts on the episodes. If it's one that you have seen, if it's one that you haven't seen, maybe the first time you've ever seen it before and maybe the next time I'll start reading along and seeing what kind of comments you leave because it'd be interesting to get a discussion going about these timeless stories that everybody seems to love and enjoys watching the heck out of and revisiting so let's jump in the middle ground between light and shadow between science and superstition I don't think I'll ever get tired of this uh, opening I mean so far I'm only two episodes in but we'll see what happens on like episode 10 or 15 it is an area which we call the twilight zone Oh, it looks like a little nod to uh, Lost in Space. July cleanup sale, lovely things, calamine lotion. Yeah, his voice sounds very familiar. Calamine lotion. Street scene. He's a salesman. Occupation, pitchman. Lou Bookman. Pitchman. The guy in the background looks very familiar. He'll be stalked by Mr. Death. Oh, Mr. Death. He must be Death. They're very uh, on the nose with this so far. Death. Social and ice cream hour takes place right after supper. That's Ed Wynn. He does the voice of Alice in Wonderland's Mad Hatter. Don't forget the ice cream. I knew his voice sounded very familiar. I think uh, Alan Tudyk does like a little bit of a nod to him in uh, Wreck It Ralph with his character as the villain, whatever his name was. <laughs> oh, who's that? You are Lou Bookman, aren't you? That's right, Louis J. Yeah. Bookman. What a, what a last name, Bookman. The guy playing Mr. Death is Murray Hamilton. Actually, I recognize him from Jaws. It's just, he's 16 years older in that movie. Father's place of birth, Detroit, Michigan. Mother's place of birth, Syracuse, New York, right? You know a lot about me, sir. Yeah. Yes, we have to keep these things efficient. Now, today is the 19th of July. I used, have, I used to have thick, luscious hair like that. I don't anymore. This gentleman came here to ask me a lot of questions. What gentleman? Oh, she doesn't see him. What gentleman? No one's there, Lou. <laughs> Weirdo. Aren't you going to say goodbye? Oh, yeah. Goodbye, Lou. Thanks a lot. No, no, I, I mean to the gentleman there. He's not there, man. Jeez. So death is here to take him away, I'm guessing. I can... Seems pretty on the nose. Yet she can. Where's the twist? I just never will understand you people. You get the idiotic notion that life goes on forever. What do you mean, you people? And what I further don't understand... Yeah, but he's still a young man. He's barely in his 70s. You, Mr. Bookman, fall into the category of natural causes. Natural cause? Well, that's nice. At least it wasn't like murder or anything horrific, so... Yay. How much clearer do you want it? If you still don't know who I am, then you're the most dense man I've come up against. Hey, now. Well, that proves it. Your death. What if he had a trick flower? Your death? I would have been more impressed if it turned to ash and after bursting in the flames. The preordination is for death during sleep. I uh, assume this too will meet with your approval. Oh, sure. Just like, I ain't going to sleep then. <laughs> There are three major categories of appeals. One is hardship cases. No. No family. No. Priority cases, uh, statesmen, scientists, men on the verge of discoveries. No family. Uh, no. No. Nope. Well, you don't have any unfinished business, do you, Mr. Bookman? Ah, oh, but I do. Spill it. Try to think of it. I have to write a book. It's a long book. It'll take me years to finish. I've never flown in a helicopter, that's it. I have never flown in... Insufficient. Pick such a simple... Well, there is one thing. What is it, Mr. Bookman? Well... Spill it. I never made a truly big pitch. Oh. Maybe the children would be very proud of me. The children? Well, if it's for the children, you throw them in there, it's like a guarantee to get your wish. You know, the kind of pitch I was talking to you about there. One for the angels, you mean. That's right. Oh, one for the angels. The title of the episode. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, Mr. Bookman, a, an ability to, to... Does death have a conscience? It seems like he does. He's stuttering. 
mean a great deal to you, doesn't it? Oh, let him have his pitch. About... I can live till then? That's the agreement. Oh, well, I think that's a fine bargain. All right. You know, maybe not this year, maybe not for a couple of years yet. <laughs> <laughs> Very odd feeling that you're taking advantage of me. Oh, you have? Well, that's a pity. Because I am! You're going to close the door on death? Really? What a what an idiot. He's going to be out in the hall. He's going to be downstairs. Yep. <laughs> Really, the simplest form of uh, effect, the cut. Because he's going to be right there again. F-Y-I. That means for your information. Oh, I think he knows that. But since you won't come with me, <laughs> I've been forced to select an alternative. Uh -oh. Here's the twist. The little girl. Hello. Hello, sweetheart. Hey, she's okay. Who's that man? Oh, you can see death? That's not good. Mm. Better make your pitch. She's just taking the deal, man. Intermission. Stay alive. He won't come in. I won't let him come in. Yeah, but he can just appear and disappear. You can't really stop that. <laughs> you think he's just gonna stroll through the front door? I guess he will. He's early. She's to come with me at midnight, so I must be in there. At Make midnight. your pitch, dude. What does that look like to you? A tie. Look, feel it. It's not his style. He likes black. The ancient Chinese silk manufacturer. He's getting a kick out of him. Well, montage as he makes his full pitch over the 15 minutes, I guess. Tongue silk. Picture, if you will. So he pitches death. And his pitch is so good. That fascinates death to the point where he forgets to make his pickup. Fantastic thread is not available. In Why is he sweating? <laughs> this is like, oh god, decisions. Ten, not at five, but at the ridiculously low what, price. Two? One dollar. Whoa, it's even lower than I thought. Genuine static erratic. You should have started at like ten till. That's just a lot of talking in fifteen minutes. You are a persuasive man. I challenge any of to even come midnight. close to matching what I offer. Did he do it? Oh, you weren't there. You weren't there to take her. And she's still alive. Yeah, he did. And she's okay. A most persuasive pitch, Mr. Bookman. And but he made a hell of a pitch. Pitch for the angel. That's right, a pitch for the angels. Yep. Oh, excuse me, I forgot something. I'll be back in a minute. Can't take it with you. You never know who might need something up there. You made it. Oh, good. Louis J. Bookman, age 60-ish. 60-ish. The end. Well, that was it. That was episode two, one for the angels. It didn't have a lot of mystery in it. That's what I like about Twilight Zone when it comes to the episodes I enjoy or the ones that I have enjoyed is that there is mystery. There is like a sense of wonder. This one, not so much, but it was a good story. I knew what was coming, though. I knew where we were going when it came to the ending and what was all going to happen, how it was going to unravel. But uh, all in all, it was a good story, and I liked that it kind of came full circle with everything and him making the uh, biggest pitch of his life and basically making death miss his appointment in uh taking him instead so yeah it was a good roundabout story but so far not my favorite since there's only two episodes that i've actually seen at this point but uh let's get into a little bit of the trivia mr death notes that bookman's father was born in detroit and his mother was born in syracuse these are also the hometowns of rod serling's own respective father and mother well that's cool for this show, Rod Serling reworked an earlier teleplay of the same name that he had written for the mystery series, Danger, 1950-1955. The original version, aired in 1954, involves a pitchman trying to protect his brother from a pair of hitmen. Louis J. Bookman was born in September 1890. The episode takes place from July 19th to July 20th, 1960. Mr. Bookman's apartment is cluttered with many items that represent childhood. One notable piece is a wall hanging of Disney's Cinderella by the Dolly Toy Company. Probably worth a crap load today. In consideration of Edwin's advanced age, the nighttime scenes were filmed during the day, with tarps pulled over the set to give the illusion of night. 
Well, it worked. I thought it was nighttime. That's all the trivia they had for this episode, but hey, interesting episode. Can't wait for episode three. Stay tuned for that for next week. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this episode. And follow along with me if you dare. I think you'll enjoy it, though. We'll have a discussion every week, and we'll read some of the comments that you guys leave for the next week's episode. And keep on trucking to episode 156. Until then, see you later.